Mexicans are rapists. The Muslim ban. He said there were fine people on both sides. He supported white supremacists. Either, Spike Lee, you're too stupid to be representative of this movement and this project, or you are lying in order to leverage this to don't vote for Donald Trump. There is no third option. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spike Lee, this has been, this, there was an interview. I want to sort of set up this clip first. There's a little bit of context that needs to be understood. And yeah. I really want to know, do you genuinely think that Donald Trump could be a racist? Do you think racism has been on the rise since Donald Trump? I, I don't buy it. I've talked about this, yeah. but it seems like now the rhetoric is heating up even more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where they're All trying day. to paint him as a racist. Uh, so the 1619 Project is, it's a project from the New York Times, okay? Yeah. And it's designed to write a series of pieces showing that everything, Basically, the basis of America is the, its result of slavery, genocide, uh, all of it, everything bad. And they've got a number of high-profile celebrities, uh, from Spike Lee to Oprah, trying to promote it. Now, some leaked internal discussions actually show the decision was made to shift the narrative away from the failed Russia story. Hmm. So now they're going, Russia didn't work, <laughs> yeah, let's exactly. pivot back work. to racist. After right. Mueller failed to find any collusion, the editor-in-chief... New York Times supposedly at a loss how to cover Trump, so he decided, all right, let's 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 just paint all of America's history as racist and say it's more racist now than ever. It's more racist now than slavery because Trump. <laughs> Couldn't possibly be Gosh. honest. Uh, right. I don't oh know. So it's, it's not really about slavery. I, I want to be clear about this. That's how they're trying to sort of frame this. They just need something to make President Trump look bad by their own admission. Right. And they're asking this question, like, why are we even asking anymore if he's a white supremacist? They're, they're just saying it. They're not trying to paint him as a racist. They're saying yeah, they're he is. Saying Right? What do you, That's what they're doing. What do you think, yeah. half Asian Bill? Do you feel I mean, like you've been marginalized more? Uh, half marginalized? I have been, my white part has been more marginalized. <laughs> yes, that's for <laughs> sure. No, I mean, yeah, we, exactly. it, it, look, there, there's no question that slavery is a part of our, our history as a country. Sure. Yeah. Um, whether, whether it defines the nation, um, and it, to say that is to say that every person who was a part of it, oh, well, did you fight in the, uh, as part of the Union Army? No, you must have also been part of slavery as well, right? right? I mean, th yeah. there's no nuance to it other than just to say, hey, I don't want you to forget every one of you is a piece of shit. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's essentially, that's this tagline yeah. of 1619, right? <laughs> every, everything you, you enjoy should Washington taste like don't trust asshole. Yeah. Right. I mean, well, yeah. and and you, you can use that argument listen, for everything, there's right? There's a sore spot. You still can't ride the Amtrak. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it makes the assumption that the United States would not have been a great country without slavery. So we had all the natural resources. We had great navigable rivers, which turns out to be very important. Yeah. And we had a great system of government that was growing while... Okay, actually, so we, we, we did a whole segment on this. If people go back through the archives yeah. where actually the South was was uh, hindered by slavery. If you look at yeah. sort of the, the economic developments that happened in the North, it didn't happen in the South. And that's yeah. because slave labor doesn't tend to put in... They're not burning the candle at both ends, and they're yeah. not necessarily doing an honest job. And I'm not saying that slaves were dishonest. I'm saying no. they shouldn't have done an honest job if they no. were enslaved. Yeah. They should have sabotaged, and a lot of them did. But if you look at the developments, they were hampered by slavery. Yeah. All right, so this is just... I just want to make sure that we set this up so you understand why Spike Lee is making the rounds and is on Anderson Cooper's 360 to plug this 1619 project. You'll be hearing a lot about it. Let's start this off. This is important to you. It's very important to me uh, because so much, we're not taught this in school. Right. You know, we're still dealing with Christopher Columbus and all the other stuff. What? <laughs> Yes, we are. Yeah, everyone is taught about oh, slavery I, I in school. I'm we're, sorry, we're wait, is Christopher taught. Columbus not real? Or? It's yeah. not a real thing. <laughs> he didn't land on Plymouth Rock. I, I, I don't... Who, who, <laughs> wait, wait, so there was American slavery in 1492. That's what was happening? Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I don't... How yeah. history works. It's how you teach it. One thing, yeah. and then the next thing, and then the next I thing. I think the Indians were enslaving other Indians. It's almost as though yeah, it's, it's linear. <laughs> it's, I, it would... Wow, uh, I, I must... Um, Spike Lee, tell me more. Is it my meds, or does that The good thing is he's going to be telling you a whole... Lot more. Question number two today: <laughs> Who did not learn about slavery uh, in school? I think a lot of people aren't taught that we are uniquely responsible for ending slavery ah, yeah. yes, in a lot a of ways point. in the modern world. But let's go to the next clip. This country, United States of America, was built upon the genocide of Native people and and slavery. I mean, that's a fact. Well, you can say that. <laughs> you can say that. That's fact. not necessarily That's going to be a no a from me. That's a fact. And by the way, no one is, wants to minimize here the atrocities that were committed against Native Americans. Back then, we called them Indians, and as Elizabeth Warren says, Redskins. But she's 1,164th, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she can, can say, say that. that. Native Americans, they were, the one thing people don't understand, they were mostly wiped. We've talked about this so many times, I'm sorry I have to repeat it. They were wiped out through diseases that the settlers brought inadvertently because these people yeah. had not developed an immunity to them. Out of, the, I think, 250,000 Natives, Columbus's first stop, right in one of the Americas, His mm -hmm. Hispaniola. I should do the uh, Brian mm. Callan. Hispaniola. That later. <laughs> New diseases wiped out over 230,000 oh, of the indigenous people Lord. by 1517. That's nearly 95% of their population. A big part of that, by the way, they hadn't domesticated the horse, 
Right, this idea, yeah. if you're coming into contact with a domesticated horse for the first time, this whole idea of bow and arrow, horseback culture, it's a lie. They hadn't domesticated the horse, and they didn't use the wheel. Yeah, mm -hmm. and by the way, when we come and like accidentally kill 95% of you just by shaking your hand, like it's our bad, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know what germs were. I mean, so, my bad. <laughs> I mean, part of it, part of it is, is, is like, this is the part where, again, we've talked about this before, where there's, there's just a lack of nuance. When you go to the 1619 Project, and all you want to focus on is one part of history that involves slavery, to use that to push a political agenda, Agenda today, right? right. Yeah. Then, then you've ignored the fact that sure was slavery a part of our history? Did slavery, uh, you know, set certain things in motion in this country? And and some would argue still has some reverberating effects to this point. I think we don't. We just disagree on how much effect it still has yeah, today sure. and what needs to be de well, dealt with it. Well, um, and, same with the Native American population. I mean, there there right. there's unquestionably atrocities occurred. Yeah. But to say. It's only atrocities is well, to ignore and, and the rest of the history. What I have a problem with is the term genocide. Okay, this right, is a problem yeah. because there are more people with a, uh, Elizabeth Warren is a perfect example. More people with a percentage of Native American than ever. And that's because most of it was due to interbreeding. We, we didn't want to kill all of them. No. We wanted to marry them. We wanted to have population. But yeah. let's look through the, the, the most bloody battles, right? Then this, these certainly did happen. Wounded knee you probably know about because you yeah. learned about it in school where yeah. it's not taught. 150 or 350 <laughs> Native Americans killed or wounded. Yeah. There were also 25 yeah. American soldiers killed, 39 wounded. Listen, it's a little different from a genocide because if you're talking about the Holocaust, like, well, you know what? The Jews got their licks in too. <laughs> That's not what a genocide that, is. Yeah, like, well, exactly. you know, they, they took out six million, but I tell you battle. what, those Jews, they, they pulled off a couple of million. You know, there was right. a give and take. No, that's what genocide is, is a complete extermination. By yeah. the way, sometimes yeah. massacres went the other way. 1622, the uh, is it pronounced? Pa 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 I don't pa know. Pa pa Indians, uh, they had no casualties in this battle. They slaughtered 347 English settlers. Yeah, yeah so Again, happens. that's not the way genocide usually goes. And don't forget, this is something people don't remember. We don't teach this in history. Native American tribes were warring with each other before uh, yeah. we got yeah. here. Lots and lots. They were incredibly violent. To go south, how do you think Cortez defeated the 500 conquistadors? No, he enlisted the help of other native tribes. We tossed them some fire water and said, listen, these guys have been enslaving you to collect their gold for centuries. How about you try the guys with the metal hats? <laughs> well, and when we show up and we have kind of peaceful relationships with some tribes and then we start to move, you guys were already warring. What you're really doing is basically saying, we're really pissed off that when you came in, you were better at war than we were. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we were already trying to take each other's land, and, and I was succeeding, and now you kicked my butt, and I'm really pissed about that. Sorry, not that. sorry. Sorry, well, guys. I mean, like, I, I mean, here's what I will have to say, is that if you, if you jump in and you ask the question of, did we have a right to come in and take this land? I don't, I don't necessarily know that there's any particular more or less right between the people who are already here. Is it a first mover's right? I mean, right. that's the part yeah, where, exactly. the, where the narrative falls apart when you hear people say, well, these these were the indigenous people. Oh, okay, so so well, we don't care about the indigenous species that were here before those indigenous people came here. Are they important? Oh, well, yeah, sure, they are more important. And then you're just saying, okay, right. great, well, this, so we should just get rid of all people. Yeah. Every single person should leave this country. Yes, right. And, and it just it falls apart if and, you follow that And so many that people logic. don't understand yeah, contact will be made at some point. So let's say we never did back then. Today, a helicopter, a chopper, or a plane goes overhead. Guess what? Now it's been made. Yeah. There's going to have to be a clash of civilizations. When there is a more advanced civilization, yeah. they meet, either they adapt, right? Either they become a part of this new, or they get wiped out. That's what, that's what yeah. has happened always. We're in a unique uh, time in history in that we don't go take over countries that are inferior yes. like Canada. We don't do that because we've advanced beyond it. But th this is the right. way it worked throughout the globe for all time. Yeah. Yeah, atrocities. But the idea that America is uniquely responsible for it, that's the problem I have. Yeah. But yeah. again, this is right. all a thin veil to get to the real reason, which is the 1619 Project. Is Donald Trump a white supremacist? Why are we still asking, is this guy a white supremacist? I mean, like, to you, that is a, that it's not even a question anymore. Oh, oh he's just said okay. I mean, the Muslim I thought man, the clip froze. Mexicans, uh, <laughs> rapists, murderers, drug dealers. I mean, it, it, it's the what? That guy. Uh, did he, he go before going to Anderson Cooper? Spike was he Lee talking froze. to his wife? He's like, no, nah, listen, I need my heroin and Damon the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does just go out high. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my Anderson Cooper. I could fit you in my back pocket. What are those glasses? <laughs> They're why are, we, why are we even asking if he's a white supremacist? Because most most people aren't. Yeah. Only you are. <laughs> and you're answering <laughs> your own question, oh by gosh. the way. And then he talks about how can you have so many inaccuracies in one sentence? It's all, tough. The Muslim ban, all Mexicans are racist. Okay, let's just go through this. And then he goes Again. on to talk about the good people on both sides. Listen, <laughs> there was no Muslim ban. 
There was never a Muslim right. ban. All Muslims were never banned from the United States. What you're talking about is an immigration ban on seven countries that were identified as countries of concern from Barack Obama, and they were put on a temporary ban. Mm -hmm. By the way, Trump uh -oh. enforced it for 90 days. Obama enforced it for six months with Iraq. <laughs> There's no Muslim <laughs> ban. The narrative? There's never been a Muslim ban. Stop it, okay? <laughs> All, and this is this is what bothers me. I mean, you know this as a lawyer. Yeah. They teach this to politicians, too. Yeah. Like, obviously he's being disingenuous a little bit here, but he could have at least just sort of curbed his language by just saying, you know, he said that uh, Mexicans are rapists. Instead, he said, saying all Mexicans are rapists? You're just making it too easy, I sweetheart. I know. <laughs> All Mexicans are rapists. Really? Did he say that's the first thing to tell a politician is don't use words like all, right. absolutely, completely, totally. And that's why when we do it on this show, we only we do it by design if we're 100% certain, like making sure that half Asian Bill Richmond gets me unblocked from Rashida yep, Tlaib's personal there you go. account. All Mexicans are rapists. Donald Trump was talking about MS-13. Mm -hmm. People who rape and kill women and children, that's what they do. It's crazy. That's right. their calling card. They're the killing women and children bandits. By, by the way, did you see Anderson Cooper push back on that? I, I did we not? Well, no, oh, we didn't have that. Well, clip. yeah, no, and then we no, no we have he, it next. Yeah, so this is the next one. We're not now. He goes on to the one that they paired a lot. That Donald Trump, his justification, along with all Mexicans are rapists and the Muslim ban, is uh, that he praised neo Nazis. To hear Spike Lee tell him, he can't make a decision between what's right and wrong, what's love and hate. There's both people. I mean, that's gonna be behind his. I mean, that that quote. It's that's gonna be attached to him. He's on. He's gonna be the wrong side of history, and that's the first thing they're gonna say. That quote. It's interesting because there's a lot. There's now a movement among some Republicans to kind of rewrite the history of what the president said. What? What? No. <laughs> rewrite what? history? Yes, wow. we are attempting he to rewrite history by simply showing a clip of Donald Trump condemning neo Nazis in his own words. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, it okay? Twice. Revisionist uh -huh. Wow, it's like, you know, all those times when I hear on CNN that Donald Trump has never called out neo-Nazis or white supremacists. It's like and this then video doesn't exist. It, you know, I can't believe, look at the amazing made-up videos that people are able to create in the Korean industry. I mean, just like some film <laughs> studio. He condemned neo-Nazis the same amount of times in one phrase as Spike Lee was wrong. Yeah, right? exactly. Yes, Well, exactly. but here's the thing. So Anderson Cooper didn't push back on the Mexicans' comment. He's a journalist, I thought. I thought yeah. he was trying to get to the truth. Thought didn't push wrong. back on that. And and then carried his water on this comment and said, yeah, they're trying to rewrite history. Right, Spike? Right? I'm cool, right? Yeah. I like your glasses. I don't think he said <laughs> exactly that, but I'm sure he, he did. He said it, Stephen. He probably tried to lift them. He, he winked. The I saw him wink. <laughs> there, was wink. <laughs> there was a wink. There was a wink. It pisses he, me was, off. He's a, a journalist. It was a wink between guys with glasses. G. Morgan Jr. was there, too. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a genre of Son wink? Of a gun. I don't know. I don't understand what's going on. All right. So, uh, way, by the way, oh, I forgot. Hit the notification bell if you're subscribed because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, subscribe on iTunes. Leave us a rating. And most importantly, do join Mug Club. Ladderwithcredit.com slash Mug Club. Um, not only do you get the full daily show, like hours and hours of content yes, this yep. week that we can never air on YouTube. But my half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, is very expensive. So <laughs> when we're doing our legal stuff with big tech yeah. or even representatives like Rashida Tlaib, just understand Mug Club supports that, especially since we've been demonetized. Yes, yeah. And that's a show. You'll get to see it too. You know what? I, I, this one thing to that point is that people only really see like the tip of the iceberg of, of all the things that we have to fight with on the back, oh, gosh. End, oh, on the back gosh. end of things. Yeah. I mean, it's a constant it's a constant battle. So Mug Club is what allows us to continue. I mean, how many tens fights? of thousands just in basic paperwork? last year of people making <laughs> false claims. Uh, I mean, there were, well, between uh, people stealing content, between people accusing us of stealing content, uh, just this week, there was 14. Yeah. So, wow. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> you know, just having to deal with that. I mean, and, right. and it's, it's... Glad uh, it's we're keeping you busy, buddy. <laughs> Is that a big part of before the show, if Bill Richmond, Happy Asian Bill tries to come yeah. into my office, say, no, no, it's only going to make me mad. <laughs> don't tell do me. Do it after I the see show. I see him getting in his okay. mood. Yeah. Yeah. Today, yeah. you're being sued by an angry tranny who thinks that you're guilty of hate speech and claims that the socialism shirt is actually her face. <laughs> yes. I know it's not true, but it might just be worth it to pay this crazy person to go away. I'm like, ah, right. <laughs> Mug Clubbers made it happen. All right, let's go out to the, uh, let's go to the, thank you, Mug Club. Yeah. Otherwise, we would just be, we would be crossing the finish line. Like in the movie, uh, was it Small Soldiers with the, yeah. with the Gorgles or whatever it was? Like, oh, and yeah. the guy's trying to walk and they're all jumping on That would be us just with just hundreds of angry trannies and Vox employees <laughs> trying to do this show if it were not for Happy and Bill Richmond yeah. looking over our shoulder. Yeah. Uh, next clip talking, now we go directly to the KKK with Dame Edna Spike Lee. 
they're not even hiding is, you know, at least the, the KKK you know people why? are too, too cowards because to actually show Because the guy in the face. White House gave him the, 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 the dog whistles, the, 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 like, the, come oh on out. Gosh. So what? our guys in the White House, so we're good. I don't think that's how a dog whistle works. It's not like, come on out. <laughs> <laughs> It's a that's silent a, that's whistle. A, that's Only dogs can hear it. Yeah. I know. He thinks they're handing the whistles. Here, let's, let's, yeah. <laughs> silly. Sometimes I like to have a laugh. Um, <laughs> if President oh, Trump Mary is telling the KKK <laughs> to go for it, as you say, any examples? Mm -hmm. yep. Any examples of dog whistles? Or you know what? Any actual, any pictures of Donald Trump even with an actual whistle? I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 close I, I think what, what we should know is remember from that clip with Trump where he was condemning the neo Nazis and the right. white nationalists, and then it wasn't just enough to do it once, but he did it again. Um, yeah. And so uh, after doing it twice, I definitely got the read between the lines. Is I love yeah. neo Nazis yeah. and white yeah. nationalists. Right. That, that was what I mean. That's what I got. Hey, hey. I had my fingers crossed. <laughs> Both times. <laughs> Anderson 360, more like 160. What? Is that a... Epic. It's going over your head. <laughs> I'm sorry. It seems like a kind of insult. That Actually, it's almost I mean, here's the thing. turning all the way around. All of these examples can be easily debunked <laughs> with a quite. quick Google search or a clip, just yeah. as quickly as the 77 cents on the dollar pay gap myth. Oh so if it's God, so yeah. obvious, why is this even a question anymore? Well, because you've brought no evidence. How about you show me a clip? Like a, right. even just one picture, one picture, anyone, one picture of Donald Trump with a loud whistle. I'll allow that <laughs> and apologize. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, we have another clip, like I think, to get to more. Sp oh, it's spiky. in the dossier. Right, here you go. The whistle. Let's go. Clip. What do you hope people are kind of reflecting on in terms of the impact of, you know, enslaved people? Yeah, the 1619 of project. Them it's who about were here, 1619. Um, whose names we'll never know. A lot of these people getting behind this guy, digging me in the wrong side of history with him. Oh. <laughs> So the, the project is not so much about that American history as it is. Oh. Don't with do him. vote for Donald Trump, my possums. <laughs> uh, what happened to the six? He, he really is there is to plug the, the 1619 project. Right? That's yeah. why he's there. This is supposed to be a project that teaches people, yeah. educate, because we wasn't taught it in school. Yeah. Right? So Even why aren't you teaching are. us now? And it said it's don't vote for Trump. Can you imagine any, any other scenario where someone is there to specifically plug yeah. a particular project? Like, well, tell us about your... New film, Pineapple Express 2. I have ass warts, yeah. <laughs> what does that have to do? <laughs> that has nothing to do with the topic Thank at you. hand no, here. No, no, but you know, what I do, uh, you know what I do appreciate about it, though? Is it's honest. Because <laughs> they could have it's continued true. to say, no, 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 this is just an educational project. Here we are educating. And it would have been a little bit more, you know, circumstantial to be able to say, oh, you know, this is actually an attack on uh, trying to change voting minds away from the president because of the upcoming election. And coincidentally, just at the timing of everything, we right. couldn't have done it any other time between now and 1619. But this was the year we were <laughs> right. going to do it yeah. at this very moment in history. It was a coup. Um, but, but that is the part that I appreciate is that um, the glasses Lay embolden low him. for four centuries. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wait. And then bring out the guy who did do the right thing. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's the part where you, you go, you go, hey, yeah, thank you. I appreciate you letting us know that yes. this is just a thinly Everything that we believe the left to be, that they kind of veiled for a long time. You know, kind of like, yeah. oh, okay, you know, a little bit of sleight of hand. Now they're just doing out in the open. Yeah. And I think there is a silver lining there because now people, like for the longest time, really up until Donald Trump, people thought CNN was legitimate news. Yeah. Yep. And I had been, that's I had been shouting this crazy. from the rooftop, like the Ricola guy, <laughs> where I was saying like, no, listen, it's not MSNBC. Your problem is CNN because they present it as though it's actually unbiased. And right. now... We know through these interactions with people like Spike Lee and Anderson Cooper, and you, you had a good point before. Yeah, exactly. So by these standards, we'd actually have to say that President Barack Obama was also uh, a racist, right, against white uh -oh. people, right? Okay, so just hear me out for Can't a second, right? I don't know if I want to. You got to give me just a second. Don't hear him out, Jay Martin. No, no, he not. Ooh, All right, so I'm gonna I make the point here. A lawyer well, now? no, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> is there a legal liability here? This is every so day. He, just, just follow me, right? So uh, if I had a son, he would look like Trayvon Martin, right? right? And then we had hands up, don't shoot, and we had all right. Yep. We're gonna send, uh, we're gonna send uh, uh, AG. Uh, down there to take a look at this. We're going to go through all this stuff. And so Black Lives Matter comes out of this movement, right? Yeah. And so you have this huge, this massive overreach of Black Lives Matter trying to make people think that the that we every white person in America doesn't think that your life matters, especially police officers, even though it was right. black police officers involved in some of these yeah. incidents, right? Right. And so there's this massive overreach. What happens typically when there's a massive overreach by one side in one of these things, right? So you have people on this side. 
there's a big push by people on the other side. I think I would make the argument that Donald Trump is not what has brought white supremacists kind of out into the open. It's a huge overreach by Black Lives Matter that has allowed that. I'm not saying it's the sole cause. No. I'm saying it has allowed that to happen because all of a sudden, all these guys who are kind of hiding in the shadows are like, what the hell's going on over here? Yeah. These guys are out overreaching, and now and, public and by sentiment the way, Barack is against Obama that. Certainly did not condemn Black Lives Matter. No, as emphatically as Donald Trump has condemned neo Nazis. Exactly, white he never did that. So by these same standards, Barack Obama. By the way, you know, newsflash: it's possible to be racist and be black. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying he was. I'm saying that if we use these same standards, right. you have to look at him yeah. in the same lens you're looking at Trump. He would be looked at as potentially being a racist well, person. Well, the idea, though, people. is that you cannot, maybe black people can be discriminatory, but they can't be racist because they're not in a position of the systemic powers that be, like Whatever. the presidential office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't believe it. All this asshole. And the country's um, chief so lawman, too. One real quick point is I, I don't want this to be a message where, because Spike Lee and some of the folks who are at the top of the 1619 project, that, it, that there's a denial of slavery and its impact on those people, or even people that no. in, in the generations no. afterwards, right? Oh, of there's course not. Some impact. And, and this is the important part is that if you're out there trying to think about how to intelligently talk to someone either who's confused about what it is or someone on the other side that's trying to say, oh, you know, this is what the project is, don't, don't bury your head. Go look at the project. Just take it with a grain of salt. Just recognize when there's facts right. and history versus political message. Like if you want to talk about what today is and how different it is and how we've come as a country and what we are today versus in 1619, you got to know the facts. So well, go I, look I at the, the facts. The problem, unfortunately, is, is, is obviously the incredible bias. Like Spike Lee, is, he's, he's sort of the spearhead, yeah. or at least seen that way, of the modern black rights movement. Whatever yeah, the hell that is. is. Now, I don't, you know what? Can someone answer me this? Whatever what rights are they fighting for now? I'm not talking about discrimination. I'm talking about individual racists. What rights are they fighting for now when they talk right. about black rights movement, when they talk about white people? I, I, I don't know. Genu this could just be me being tone deaf. It could be a blind spot. I don't know. I have a car that yeah. does have some blind spots. Yeah, it's Korean. Possible. So, no, it's a Korean car. Horrible oh. blind spots. Oh, I thought you, I thought you had a Korean car. No, yeah. I wouldn't do that in front of my half Asian lawyer. But let's look at let, like let, at uh, um, he's Chinese. Um, <laughs> half Chinese. Yeah. Can you tell the difference? Like, if you see someone, can you say he's Korean? Instead anyway, of Chinese. Anyway, I can, but I can't, I can't with white people. Spike Lee, I mean, everyone's white. Black Klansman, Malcolm X, do the right thing. Um, yeah. There's, there's a there's reason a he's on here, the yeah. show, right? There's a reason he's been chosen as a spokesperson for 1619. It's because he's seen as a figurehead, right? So they, he's clearly presented as an authoritative figure on this topic. And he is either demonstrably completely misinformed or he's deliberately misinforming everybody yeah. else. There are only two options. All Mexicans are rapists. The Muslim ban. He said there were fine people on both sides. He supported white supremacists. Either, Spike Lee, you're too stupid to be representative of this movement and this project, or you are lying in order to leverage this to don't vote for Donald Trump. There is no third option. And I think a part of this is uh, these people being misinformed is, um, it's idiot bubbles. Like Spike Lee goes out and says, "Oh, he said all Mexicans are rapists. Yeah. He said yeah. uh, he said that uh, uh, um, uh, that he likes white supremacists. He said he didn't like my glasses. It was Tom <laughs> Tom Hanks said World War II. I remember at one point was based on racism and uh, fear mongering. They're, mm -hmm. they're surrounded by people in this entertainment industry, and by the way, that includes the media. Okay, yeah. where no one just says, huh." Exactly. Yeah, what? Right. There's no checks. And Spike balances. Lee wouldn't go out and spout this if Anderson Cooper, before he went on it, like anytime we talk about this before the yeah. show, we go through a show map and one of us has a point that we're not quite sure. We go, ooh, I don't Easy. think that's the strongest point. Yeah. Anderson Cooper could have at least <laughs> done Spike Lee a favor and we go, yeah. you know, like, I'm going to talk about how he said all Mexicans are rapists. Anderson what? Cooper could You're have said, too oh, fast. wait, wait, wait. He didn't say all. <laughs> Just <laughs> remove the word all. Right. And instead he's like, yes, it, absolutely. It, we need no pauses. jump in, no real quick. No, hey, you know, no, we should stick to facts here. Right. By the way, Warby Parker, I don't know. Spike Lee, <laughs> That's an and, and we Warby do have to get going to Brian wow. Callen who's going to be on the show. Spike oh, Lee man. and the people at the New York Times, they're, let me simplify this for you. They are either misinformed or they are misinforming, period. Neither option is a good look for a legitimate news outlet. Hey there, YouTube viewers. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell if you're already subscribed to this channel because that lets you know when new videos come out and they don't show up on the YouTube search feed. Also, there are videos playing in boxes here. Click one of those. Just of all the things that I just mentioned, all you have to do is one. And if you don't, I will run for the United States presidency under the 1, 1,064th percent Cherokee party. I have yet to pick my VP.